Throughout history, certain weapons have achieved almost mythical status. Among them, few are as legendary as Damascus steel. Famed for its strength, sharpness, and beautiful wavy patterns, this ancient blade-making technique has fascinated historians, metallurgists, and warriors alike. But here's the mystery. Modern science has yet to fully replicate it. What made Damascus steel so special, and how was its knowledge lost? Damascus steel refers to a type of steel used in sword making from around 300 BCE to the 17th century, particularly in the Middle East and South Asia. Known for its distinctive water-like patterns and legendary durability, it was often said that Damascus blades could slice through other swords, even rocks. But this wasn't just legend. Ancient accounts from Crusaders and Islamic warriors often emphasized its unmatched cutting ability. Damascus steel's visual appeal was just as important as its functionality. The mesmerizing patterns resembling flowing water, known as Damascus patterns, were caused by varying carbon content and etching techniques. These weren't just artistic choices. They indicated the internal grain structure and composition of the steel, offering clues about how the blades were made and why they performed so well. And Damascus steel was originally made from a material called Woot steel, imported from India and Sri Lanka. This crucible steel was high in carbon and produced under precise conditions. When forged correctly, it created blades of extraordinary resilience. These weapons became highly sought after across the Islamic world from Persia to Syria and were used in iconic battles by Saracen warriors, Ottomans and Indian kings. The production of Woot steel involved melting iron with plant materials and other organic matter in sealed crucibles, creating a steel ingot rich in carbon. These ingots were then shipped to the Middle East, where master blacksmiths heated and forged them over and over to manipulate the microstructure and bring out the beautiful layered patterns. During the medieval period, Damascus swords were traded across continents. They became symbols of power, status and cultural pride. European crusaders returned home with stories of Saracen blades that could split their own swords in half. Islamic poetry and literature also praised these weapons, comparing their sharpness to moonlight and their strength to the heavens. At a molecular level, Damascus steel was remarkable. Modern studies suggest that the forging process created microstructures known as carbides, particles of iron and carbon, distributed in a way that provided both hardness and flexibility. This balance made the swords not only sharp, but also resistant to shattering. Some researchers even found traces of nanowires and carbon nanotubes in ancient Damascus samples a feat modern blacksmiths can't easily reproduce. Further scientific analysis shows that the alternating bands of soft and hard steel created through thermal cycling gave Damascus blades a unique mechanical advantage. The hard bands retained a sharp edge while the softer areas absorbed impact, reducing the chance of breaking. In 2006, scientists at the Technical University of Dresden found evidence of carbon nanotubes in samples of true Damascus steel. This discovery shocked the scientific community. Carbon nanotubes are used in modern nanotechnology and were previously thought to be a 20th century invention. But how ancient smiths achieved this remains a mystery. Were these effects accidental? Or did ancient artisans understand the materials better than we think? Despite its superiority, Damascus steel vanished by the 18th century. Why? Historians point to a few key factors. The loss of Woot's steel supply, trade route changes, colonization, and a decline in the skilled artisans who knew the secrets. The process was closely guarded and passed down orally, meaning once the last true masters were gone, the art was lost. The decline of wood steel production in India played a major role. British colonial policies disrupted local industries and redirected resources to European markets. 
The traditional methods were deemed inefficient and often replaced with industrial scale alternatives. As the supply of high quality woots dwindled, so did the ability to produce true Damascus steel. Furthermore, the mystical aura around Damascus steel may have contributed to its disappearance. Some blacksmiths may have exaggerated their secrecy or rituals, leading to a loss of practical knowledge. Others were wiped out by war, disease, or changing political tides. Whatever the cause, the knowledge faded, not with a bang, but with a whisper. In the last century, metallurgists and historians have tried to resurrect Damascus steel. While many have created pattern-welded blades that look similar, the exact properties of ancient Damascus steel remain elusive. Some blacksmiths have come close by carefully controlling the carbon content and cooling rates, but no one can say for sure they've replicated the original technique. The original wood steel's composition, along with the environmental and even microbial conditions of ancient forges, may hold the missing pieces. In the 1980s and 90s, researchers like Dr. John Verhoeven and master bladesmith Alfred Pendre collaborated to understand Woods-based Damascus steel. They successfully produced blades that showed similar patterns and characteristics by mimicking the Woods composition and heat treatment cycles. However, even their results weren't perfect replicas. Today, modern craftsmen continue experimenting with different ore sources, forge atmospheres and cooling methods. While metallurgical tools like electron microscopes and AI modeling help, the exact recipe remains elusive, proving how advanced ancient metallurgy really was. Legends claim that Damascus blades could cut through gun barrels or sever silk in mid-air. While such feats are likely exaggerated, tests on surviving blades confirm their incredible edge retention and resilience. Their mystique may have been amplified by the awe of their enemies, or by the deliberate myth-making of the cultures that wielded them. While modern recreations show that Damascus-style blades perform exceptionally well, many myths have persisted over the centuries. Some likely emerged from misunderstandings or embellishments. For instance, the story of cutting through a falling silk scarf was probably symbolic of the blade's fine edge rather than a literal demonstration. However, Damascus blades were certainly stronger and more flexible than most of their contemporaries. In side-by-side -side testing against other historical swords, they often outperform due to the balance of hardness and resilience. The tales may be grand, but they weren't entirely without basis. Beyond their utility, Damascus swords held deep cultural meaning. They were often passed down through generations, adorned with intricate engravings and revered as status symbols. Owning such a blade meant you were not just a warrior, you were part of an elite tradition. In Persian and Arabic cultures, Damascus blades were symbols of divine favor. Poets described them with reverence and rulers gifted them to trusted generals. Some blades even bore inscriptions calling upon God or commemorating victories. These swords weren't just tools of war, they were spiritual and cultural artifacts. Even today, collectors and historians speak of Damascus swords with reverence. Museums around the world house these relics, often displayed behind glass like sacred objects. Their aura continues to captivate, reminding us of a time when science and art were forged together, literally. Today, the term Damascus steel often refers to pattern-welded steel, layered and forged to mimic the appearance of the original. These blades are popular in high-end kitchen knives and artisanal sword making. While not identical in composition, the modern fascination with Damascus steel reflects our enduring admiration for lost knowledge and superior craftsmanship. Modern Damascus pattern knives are made by layering different steels and forge welding them, then twisting, folding or manipulating them to create intricate designs. The result is visually stunning and often very durable, but chemically and structurally different from ancient Damascus. Even so, the name carries prestige. In professional kitchens, 
chefs prize Damascus knives for their beauty and performance. In online communities, bladesmiths push the boundaries of what's possible, inspired by legends of the past. The legacy lives on, adapted but not forgotten. With advances in materials science, AI modeling and archaeological techniques, we may be closer than ever to unlocking the full secrets of Damascus steel. Could the next breakthrough come from reanalyzing ancient samples with modern tools, or perhaps from rediscovering a long-lost manuscript buried in some forgotten archive? Exciting research is underway. AI can simulate complex forging processes and predict outcomes based on minute variations in temperature, atmosphere and carbon levels. Meanwhile, scientists are analyzing ancient samples with electron microscopes and synchrotron radiation to map their composition atom by atom. Some believe that forgotten texts in Sanskrit, Arabic or Persian might hold the key. Others think ancient microbial communities in the soil and furnaces played a hidden role in steel quality. The truth may lie in a combination of science, history and serendipity. Damascus steel remains a symbol of lost genius, a blade that cuts through the veil of time. Its patterns aren't just decorative, they're a testament to ancient innovation and human curiosity. As we continue to explore the past with the tools of the future, perhaps one day we'll truly bring Damascus steel back to life. Until then, it remains one of the greatest mysteries of metallurgy and one of the most beautiful.